over 3 million of my fellow Kenyans are facing climate-related starvation, and also over 20 million people in neighboring countries across the whole of Africa. And this is because of a record-breaking drought that has seen consecutive rainy seasons fail. For the past few weeks of this month, I have spent my time visiting communities who are impacted by this drought. And one such community is a community in Wajia County, which is the northeastern part of Kenya. And what I saw with my own eyes was a heartbreaking example of how the food, nature, and climate crisis has continued to devastate communities. I saw with my own eyes hungry and desperate people who are losing hope for their future. I saw with my own eyes dead and dying livestock, and these are hundreds of carcasses of goats and cows lying on the roads, and they belong to a community whose 80% of livelihoods directly depend on this livestock. I also saw and heard from parents and women who have had to pull their children out of school because they do not have any income left to be able to support their children with school fees. Because again, the livestock is what they depend on each and every day. And for the remaining ones that they have, they do not even have a good capacity or even they are not in good health to even be able to sell them to get that income. And some of them have had to pull children and most of them being girls out of school. And what these girls are left to do is to spend the whole day taking care of the remaining livestock in their homestead. So it's true that the climate crisis is impacting communities and for most of them, they're not waiting for the impacts to hit in the future. They also told me that all they have left right now to lean on is their faith. They do not know that our deadly reliance on fossil fuels is costing them their lives and their livelihoods. And they also do not know that we have spent the past years and so many years in the past talking about what we will do and making pledges and commitments that we end up not meeting. And at the end of the day, we end up making their lives more unbearable because they are the ones who are on the receiving end of this crisis despite having this contributed. But most importantly, I saw fighters. I saw communities who are willing to do everything that they can to find solutions for themselves despite the fact that they still continue to be greatly impacted. And for this particular community, they tried everything. They have tried everything, including farming, but still the rains continue to fail. And this means that they are not able to still meet their needs every day because the climate crisis is still impacting them. So it's true. Some of the impacts of the climate crisis defy human adaptation. And so we have to make sure that we are acting faster enough to save the lives and livelihoods of communities like those in Wajia County. And while this is happening, clear and concrete steps are still not being taken to turn things around. Because we have spent so many years still not taking the action, but promising to take the action. Because also, we are not going to meet any climate targets without nature. So we have to remember that these crises are all interconnected. And delivery and accountability are very crucial because we have been here before with pledges made and not met. And with every delay of action, we continue to devastate communities that have almost nothing to do with this crisis. And so the most important thing here is the fact that we need to actually move with urgency and remember that this is a human problem that calls for us to take it in our hearts and to also in our minds that there are people who are on the front lines. And we know that we have to break our deadly reliance on fossil fuels and also invest massively on a clean energy future. And we also have to transform our global food systems and ensure that we are protecting and massively restoring our ecosystems. Because it's one thing to restore the ecosystems, but it's another to continue to subsidize the destruction of nature. We have to make sure that all our remaining ecosystems continue to stay intact if we are to save all of humanity in addition to stopping the investments in fossil fuels. And countries also have to raise their ambition to limit warming to 1.5 degrees and assist others to meet this challenge by mobilizing finance and resources. So this is about humanity, this is about lives, this is about livelihoods that are in balance. And if we have to make sure that we are saving these lives and livelihoods, this will have to be about action. Because again, every delay in action 
is causing these communities that I've mentioned, like those in Wajia County, to continue be on the receiving end. And that is not climate justice. Climate justice is when women will not have to walk for long distances to look for food, water, and firewood for their families. Climate justice is when communities whose 80% of livelihoods do not have to sit down and feel desperate about a future that they do not have any hope for left at the end of the day. 